All right, guys, welcome back to another Apple Omnia video where we are going to talk about Cryo, who is the next upcoming character to be receiving an LD and a rework alongside with the FEOD 20 event. We're going to talk about what she does, what she can bring to Global Apple Omnia to players who are thinking about pulling for her LD weapon. So as always, if you do enjoy this video, and you would like to see some more future content like this make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for future content we recently hit 1000 plus subscribers now we are going for the big 2000 so your support would be greatly greatly appreciated let's go ahead let's talk about cryo and the upcoming ld and rework so cryo's ld ability is called cleansing it is a four hits aoe thunder magic brave attack plus an AoE HP attack delivered twice. It increases the brave damage dealt by 60% when attacking a single target, with the stolen brave that can overflow up to 120% of the max brave. It deals split HP damage between all targets, and it increases the party's brave by 10% of the total HP damage dealt. Now, all of the targets will receive a four-turn debuff of the Thunder Resist down after the on the first attack, and also they will receive a frame debuff for that lasts for one turn called Judgment. And Cryo also receives an eight-turn buff called Unspoken Bond. Now, while Unspoken Bond is active, her own Brave will not drop below 10% of her max brave now if it is below the 10 percent of a max brave it will not decrease any further than where it stands now upon expiration of the judgment debuff which is basically a trap it increases the own brave by 100 percent of the initial brave and it is a four hits thunder magic brave attack plus hp attack the stolen brave can overflow up to 150 percent max brave it increases the party's brave by 20% of the HP damage dealt, and the enemy does get paralyzed for one turn, and it cannot initiate chase. Now, Unspoken Bond, it raises Kral's own initial brave by 60%, and it grants the party 20% thunder enchant. So basically, her LD makes it so that Kral can empower and enchant the party. It increases the party's stolen and gained brave overflow by 20%, Judgment, the frame debuff that is implemented after using her uh, LD weapon, it lowers the defense of the targets by 30%, and again, it triggers the judgment debuff upon the enemy's turn, after the enemy's turn. And then the thunder resist down, basically just, it's basically in power for the enemy. So, overall, Cryo's LD weapon is gonna be one of the first LD weapons that you are able to thunder enchant and imperil for the party. Now the one great thing about Cryo's LD, if you're using it as a call ability, is the fact that not only will you get that enchant slash imperil on the enemies, but the effect of Cryo's LD call lasts for six turns. So if you were to equip that on a unit that doesn't have any fast speed, that doesn't have any type of instant turn rate, you can take advantage of how long you will be able to use Cryo's uh, LD ability for the entire party. Not only that, but it does give a special effect, which also raises the party's attack by 20% if you are using it as an LD call. Now let's talk about Cryo's rework. Her Crystal Awakening level 55, which is Ray of Hope Extend, it adds three extra usage to Ray of Hope, and it reduces the mastery requirement of Ray of Hope by one. Now, when you are using Ray of Hope or Ray of Hope Plus, it increases the Brave recovered based on her own initial Brave by a medium amount. It improves the effect of elemental weakness damage up by a small amount and extends its base duration by two turns. It also improves the effect of the attacker by a small amount and extends its base duration by two turns. The lower action delay, which is the effect of as compared to before, the EX recast has also been improved so as to account for the additionally lowered action delay. It does not contribute towards the total turn count except during the summon phase and or friend support. After mastering Ray of Hope, 
Her HP attack turns into HP+, plus, which is a one-hit Thunder Magic Brave plus HP attack, and it recovers Brave to the party except for herself based on the HP damage dealt. Now her Crystal Awakening level 60, which is Thunder Extend, it adds 3 usage to the Thunder ability, and it reduces the mastery requirement of Thunder by 1. Now when using Thunder or Thunder Plus, it increases the total Brave hits to 5, with Brave potency increased by a tremendous amount. It triggers the HP attack after use, and it deals 50% splash HP damage to non-targets. Now when using Thunder, it grants the max Braves up small to herself for 3 actions and allows her for 120% stolen Brave max Brave overflow. Now when you, when you are using the Mastered form or Thunder Plus, it improves the effect of the max Brave up by a medium amount and it allows for 150% stolen Brave max Brave overflow. After mastering Thunder, it turns a Brave Attack into Brave Attack Plus, which it recovers Brave to the party based on her own initial Brave before the attack, It is, and it turns into a 2-hit Thunder Magic Brave Attack, and it, it increases the Brave Potency by a medium amount. Her Crystal Level 80 Awakening. Uh, with that, her Awakening Level 75 call ability, Ray of Hope, it increases the own initial brave by a medium amount and it recovers brave to the party based on her own initial brave and it also grants the elemental weakness damage up to the party except for herself for three turns her crystal awakening level 78 which is called brave up when you are using a car with brave recovery attached it increases the brave uh the yeah it increases the brave recovered by a minimum amount and then finally the Awakening level 80, which is Ray of Hope rank up. When you're using the call ability Ray of Hope, it increases the Brave recovered based on initial Brave by a medium amount and it allows for 120% recovered Brave max Brave overflow and it extends the base duration of elemental weakness damage up by 3 turns. So after my experiences with using Kral in JP Ampo Omnia, I felt like she became very viable with her rework and her LD weapon. Her LD weapon really makes her shine and it is a must for Kral if you are planning on using her for any future fights because of the fact that she paralyzes the enemy after, tr after the trap gets triggered. She provides Enchant Slash and Peril which will eco more damage for not only her but for the party and her EX ability which provides that lovely battery for 5 turns whether the enemy is moving or, or any of your teammates or Cryo herself is moving. That battery that, that you are getting really really helps her out and helps out the party a lot to make sure that you are doing the top tier damage that you can against whatever fights you are using. Now, not only that, but the big, big plus about her is her LD call. The fact that you basically get enchant and impale for six turns, and if you were to equip her LD call on somebody who is not quick, like, like let's say Lightning or even Vincent, who just recently got an LD or just characters just that just has high speed. If you were to equip somebody with her LD card that has low speed, you can take advantage of that and have other characters who are speedy characters take advantage of that extra damage in terms of uh, bra you know in terms of like brave damage or whatnot. If you are considering pulling for Kyle, you will not be disappointed. Now, do remember that she is not a damage dealer. She is there to help support via via uh, Brave Regen, via the Enchanted Impel. So if you are considering her, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say throwing gems would be like the greatest thing because there is another uh, LD slash LD con that is coming up after crowd that is also very much as powerful, probably even better for certain situations. Um, but in general though, I would say if you are considering pulling for Cryo, I would probably throw some tickets at it. I wouldn't go too crazy on it because uh, there are some upcoming characters coming pretty soon that you may want to reconsider before you actually decide, hmm, should I actually pick up Cryo's LD now or should I pick it up later whenever it comes back? So 
Uh, other than that, though, I mean, that's basically it. If you do decide to pull for Crow, you are not going to regret it. That LD call is definitely the biggest plus about her. And it's something, it's an LD call that you can benefit from very much easily. And it's something you will not regret. But uh, other than that though, guys, that's going to be it for the video. Let me know what you guys think about Crow's rework and her LD in the comment section below. And as always, if you did enjoy the video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for future content. If you have any questions about Crow, ask away in the comment section below and I will get to you as quickly as possible. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys in my next video.